In 1997, Nike introduced two new trail shoes, the Air Humara, I've done a video on that shoe, covering the history of that model, and this one as well, the Nike Air Terra Humara. So we're gonna take a trip back to the 90s, do a little review, let's go. If I bring myself back to the year 1997, the year these shoes were released, I was living in San Diego in Pacific Beach. My life was basically just hanging out with my friends, skating, watching and playing a lot of basketball, buying hip hop records, DJing, and as always, buying sneakers. But change was in the air as sneakers were becoming more technical and that was reflected in skate shoe brands like DC, but Nike was pushing the path forward towards the futuristic year 2000. 2000, 2000. Now this shoe was designed by legendary Nike designer Peter Fogg, who took inspiration from the front disc brake and wheel of a motorcycle, and also Mexico's Tara Humara, which are a Native American population who inhabits the Sierra Madre Occidental, and they're known for their long distance marathoners. For context, this model was popular and fashionable in its day, even being featured in a Vogue article in 1998, which is exactly what Nike wanted as they wanted to be considered not just an athletic company, but a design company as well. So let's take a closer look at that design and some of the specs and features of this shoe. First, I like looking at this shoe. It's really pleasurable on the eyes, in my opinion. The paneling, the shapes, the curves of the midsole, I just find it appealing. Some of the colorways are great too, like that recent undefeated drop. Nike has always been the best when it comes to colorways, but the trail lines just hit it out of the park. This alchemy pink diffused blue colorway with hits of university gold is a nod to common colors used in classic ACG and trail models throughout the years. You can really see that disc brake and wheel inspiration on these suede side panels that cage the foot in for stability. The blue textile and gold new bug panels provide some great contrast and texture and color as well. The fully detached tongue is not gusseted, it is mostly textile and it has some nice 90s padding. The collar is padded as well, pretty well padded, and the insole is glued in. The implementation of the reflective panels shows they were thought out and a part of the design, not just an afterthought, and they look great on the front, sides, and backs of the shoes. The shapely cream colored midsole has circular punch outs in the foam to reveal a max air unit in the heel. And this is another design element I love. It just completes the overall design and attention to detail. Lots of organic shapes on this model. So the repetition of the circles on the side panels and heel unit really hit. On the bottom, we have a lugged out sole for the trails with some gold and pink hits that finished the design off. On foot, it's a classic 90s vibe. They are true to size, a bit tighter fitting with all those overlays on the upper. If you have a thicker foot, you're probably gonna wanna go a half size up. The midsole is softer than the Air Humara, but it's not modern plush. It's comfy though, definitely comfy. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Nike Air Terra Humara. You know, Nike has so many hits in the vault and it's always fun to look back at shoes that we grew up with classic designs like this one. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Peace.